Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Cheese Company will also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night. Present each week at this time Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. We'll hear from The Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. What's the grandest, most appetizing aroma that ever wafted its way out of a kitchen? Well, for me, it's always been the tempting smell of flaky, crusty brown bread or rolls fresh from the oven. And say, did you ever spread bread or rolls when they're fresh and piping hot with delicious parquet margarine? Now, there's a way to really enjoy all of your baking favorites, to spread them with parquet margarine. For parquet's own fine flavor makes other foods taste better. Of course, that's to be expected. For parquet is the quality spread for bread made by Kraft. So, naturally, being made by Kraft, you'd expect parquet to have a delicate appetizing flavor that really satisfies. And since parquet requires only four ration points a pound, your whole family can enjoy it at every meal. Parquet is a grand source of food energy, too. And every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So serve parquet for its own flavorful goodness and for the extra flavor it gives to other foods. Ask your dealer tomorrow for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. What of the great Gildersleeve? Well, life has taken on new meaning for Gildersleeve since Miss Goodwin, Summerfield's new school principal, started introducing him to the finer things. Tonight, after a musical evening with Bach, Beethoven, and Brahms, not to mention Miss Goodwin, he returns home filled with great music and a yen for a peanut butter sandwich. So, naturally, he heads for the icebox. Say, I know what's better than a peanut butter sandwich. Are there any of those little cup custards left? Uh. Well, yeah, fried chicken isn't bad. Mmm, drumsticks. Yum, 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 yum. Stay where you are and don't you... Ready, put down that cleaver. Mr. Gillespie, I thought you was a burglar. Well, I'm not, so go back to bed. Yes, sir. And stop worrying about burglars. Burglars are outdated. No one's seen a burglar in ten years. Well, I don't know about that. I see plenty of people look like burglars to me. Hey, for cat's sake, what's going on? Leroy, what are you down here for? Well, I heard all this hollering. Quiet, you'll wake your sister. Oh, there's no danger of waking her. I guess I'll go back to bed then, Miss Gilsey. Yes, good night, Bertie. I guess we don't need to worry about waking Marge up. Sure you wouldn't like me to fry eggs something for you, Miss Gilsey? No, thanks, Bertie. Good night. Yeah, but how are your head off and you wouldn't wake Marge up? Why? What do you mean? Well, I don't like to tell on her. You've been trying for three minutes. <laughs> come on, what are you driving at? She hasn't come home yet. Hasn't come... 12.30 and she hasn't come home yet? Almost 12.35. Where did she go? Who did she go out with? Wally Hoff. They took the car, too. Uh, my car? I told them they'd get in Dutch. Marge said you said she could use it any time she wanted. I said nothing of the kind. I said she could use it with my permission. Huh? Probably Brownie's Beanery. They got a jukebox out there now. Who's going out there alone with that fellow? That's what I told him. Hey, yeah, it's coming in the drive. Wally Hoff. What's going on out there? Don't ask me. Bye, George. I'll soon find out. Marjorie! Coming, Uncle Marge. Coming, Uncle Marge. Shut up, Leroy. Marjorie, where have you been? Oh, nowhere, Marge. <laughs> Why? Am I late? Am I late? Is anybody else out there? No, he's gone. Young lady, from now on, there are going to be a few, two changes around here. Yeah, that's what I said. I told you to go to bed. Now, get upstairs, both of you. I'll take this up with you in the morning. Yeah, I got it now. Pretty good, huh, Marge? I tell you, it can't be any good till you play something with the right hand, too. Well, I gotta perfect the left hand first. Stop that racket, Leroy. What's that nasty little tune? That's not a tune, Unc. That's a boogie woogie bass. Yeah, what? <laughs> boogie woogie is the latest style of piano playing. Leroy's trying to learn it. Well, I don't like it. We'll have no more of it. Oh, gee, huh? No argument. I want my breakfast. 
Oh, Bertie. Yes, Mr. Gilsmeade. Your eggs is on the fire. Thank you, Bertie. Now, you, young lady. Hmm? Since when do you think it's your privilege to borrow the car without my permission and stay out till after midnight? Well, Unky, darling, you weren't using it, so I thought... I had good reason for not using it. There's very little gas left in the tank, no more tickets till Wednesday, and I gotta drive out to the reservoir this morning. Oh. Why, Jerry, did you drive very far last night? Well, not terribly, but we had to coast a little coming home. Great, great. <laughs> the water commissioner's out of gas. Where did you go? The Brownie's Beanery. What did I tell you? Oh, you told, huh? Well, I... Little sneak. No, Marjorie. I asked him. It was after midnight. Well, there's nothing to worry about, Unc. I was with a perfectly nice boy. Wally Huff? Huff. The dentist boy? Yes. He's very polite. He told me to be sure and thank you for the use of the car. Oh, I certainly appreciate that. <laughs> what kind of a place is this Brownie's Beanery? Oh, it's a nice place. All the kids go there. What goes on there? Dancing? Mm, some. Mostly we just listen to records. Yeah, they just sit around out there and listen to Frankie. Frankie who? Frankie Sinatra. Who's he? Are you kidding? <laughs> In the blue of evening. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Nothing. That's the way the girls all squeal when Frankie sings. <laughs> I don't care. He's wonderful. I'll take Boogie Woogie. Leroy, you want to learn the piano? Well, sure. All right, you go back and take lessons from Miss Roots again. Oh, Unc, she's corny. She's a fine musician and a good teacher. He wouldn't know a hot lick if she heard it. Leroy, would you like to hear some hot licks? Oh, <laughs> oh no. Then you'll report to Miss Roots this afternoon. I'll telephone her. Okay. Maybe that'll keep them out of my hair for a while. I haven't forgotten about you, my dear. You can stay home from Brownie's Beanery for a while. No dates for a week. A week? Yes, a week. Stay home for a few days. Get your mind on higher things and jukeboxes. But there's nothing to do around here. There's plenty. Read some good books. Listen to something worthwhile on the radio. Sit and think. But I hate to sit and think. Then do something useful. Mow the lawn. Wax the floors. Help Bertie in the kitchen. Bib, where the devil is my breakfast? Bertie! Bertie! Yes, sir, here you are, Mr. Gillsleeve. Eggs over the easy, and coffee nice and hot. Well, thank you. Uh... Gosh, Bertie, if you had brought it a minute sooner, you would have saved us a lot of trouble. Leroy! Marjorie, somebody go to the door. They're both gone, Mr. Gillsleeve. I'll answer it. Well, good morning, Bertie. Commissioner in? Yes, sir. Just finishing his breakfast, Judge. Ah, good morning, Commissioner. Ah, hello, Horace. I thought maybe you could give me a ride downtown. I could, Judge, if I had some gas. And I could get some gas if I had some stamps. Well, Gildy, I'd lend you a stamp, only I'm too patriotic to violate the spirit of the law. Don't worry, Hooker. If you offered me a stamp, I'd be too patriotic to take it. Sit down. Thank you. I saw you at the um, concert last night, Gildy. You didn't see me, though, did you? I wasn't looking around the hall, Judge. I was enjoying the music. I'll say you were. <laughs> so was your lady friend. I uh, think you made quite an impression on Miss Goodwin. Oh? <laughs> what on earth could make you think that? Now, I was talking to her the other day at school board meeting. She said she thought that you were the most sophisticated man she'd met in Somerville. Sophisticated? That's what she said. Well... That's what women like, isn't it, Judge? That's what I hear, Throckmorton. <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, um, I don't suppose this means anything to you one way or another, but uh, I had a letter from Leela Ransom today, as her attorney, of course. That's nothing to me, Horace, nothing at all. I thought not, but uh, she's taking care of Beauregard's estate and the various other matters that were necessary after her husband's death, and she's coming back here to live. Wants me to get her house ready for Go right ahead, Judge. Do anything you like. I got a woman coming to clean it this afternoon, and I thought I might engage Leroy to mow the lawn if it's agreeable to you. Extremely agreeable to me. Leroy's the one you've got to persuade. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> now I'll leave the key to the house with him. I guess that takes care of everything. <laughs> oh, uh, say, tell me one thing, Yoli. What is it, Horace? Well, it's like this old man. You know, I, I always had a kind of a soft spot in my heart for Leela. You did? Yeah. So I just thought that as long as you feel the way you do... I mean, things being definitely over between... Oh, definitely. Well, 
Would you mind if uh, I kind of, uh, well, uh, gag never, Throckmorton, you know what I'm trying to say. You mean you want to court Leela? <laughs> I guess that's it, yes. <laughs> all right, you old goat, you have my blessing. Oh, thanks, Gildy, thanks. I, I wouldn't want so much as to look at Leela if you felt any different. That's the way I feel, Horace. Only I'd like to give you one piece of advice. Fine. What is it? Look out for Beauregard. He never stays dead very long. <laughs> Jack Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few seconds. Now, I know that thoughtful mothers everywhere are concerned these days with keeping their families well-nourished. And that's all the more reason you'll want to serve parquet margarine, the grand-tasting quality spread for bread. Parquet adds delicious flavor to plain, everyday foods. Makes your family want to eat more of the other things that are so good for them. Parquet has fast become the favorite spread in millions of American homes because it's so deliciously good on bread, hot toast, and rolls. But that's only half the story. Parquet in itself is a wonderfully nourishing food. Actually, one of the best of all energy foods. And right through the year, Parquet is a reliable source of vitamin A. Every single pound contains 9,000 units of this important vitamin. What's more, Parquet bears the seal of acceptance of the Council on Foods and Nutrition of the American Medical Association. So to make good foods taste better, to add important nourishment to them at every meal... Be sure you serve Parquet regularly. Ask your dealer tomorrow for Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve and his campaign to bring culture into the home. Supper is over, and our hero is stretched out comfortably in his easy chair, reading the news of the day. Leroy! Leroy! I told you not to play any more of that boogly-woogly. It's boogie-woogie! Yeah, what's the difference? I won't have it in this house. Practice what Miss Roots gave you. Okay. Well, that's more like it. Beginning to play that very nicely, Leroy. Uh, you think so? Gee, thanks. Yes, Marjorie has to practice. Yeah. talk in this house. <laughs> Say goodbye and hang up. Well, a boat. Wally, my uncle wants to use the phone. I'll call you back. Oh, no, you won't. No, you better call me back. Goodbye. <laughs> Leroy, stop that for a minute. Gosh, what now? I'd like to say something about the telephone in this house. It's here primarily for my use and for my needs. I'm a public servant in Summerfield, and it should be possible for citizens to reach me at any hour. Besides, I might like to make a phone call myself occasionally. Is that clear? You mean I can't call anybody? Only if it's important. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Leroy? Yep. Very well. Hmm. Hello? Just a minute. Leroy, telephone! Leroy 
answer the telephone. Hello? Hi, pig. No, no, I can't come over. I'm not allowed to leave the house. Till I become a second Paderewski. Careful you don't get too smart, young man. Tracy? Yeah, sure, I've read it. I bet I know what's going to happen, too. Mrs. Pruneface is going to kidnap the mayor, but Tracy will be able to find her because he... Leroy, terminate your conversation, please. Terminate it? I just started. Well, just stop. But it's important. Leroy. Unc wants to use the phone, pig. So long. Gee, Uncle Mort, I don't see what you expect us to do. Can't go out, can't listen to the radio, can't use the phone. We might as well be dead. Leroy! What is it, Uncle? For heaven's sake, play some boogie woogie. But you said you didn't like it. I don't, but I'm going out. Uh, hello, PB. Say, I'd like to use your telephone, if you don't mind. Certainly. You'll find it right there in the phone booth. Thanks. <laughs> I can't get near my own phone at home, PB. The kids are on it day and night. Uh, got change, Mr. Gillespie? Uh, wait till I see. Uh, no, I guess I'll have to have a nickel. Uh, just reach up on top of that molding there beside the booth. What? Where? Uh, right next to the booth there. Oh, yeah, I feel them. Why, these are slugs. I know. I just keep them there for my own convenience. <laughs> Peavy, you're a slippery fellow. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> it's my phone booth. I don't run it for profit, just a service to my customers. While you're at it, why didn't you get one large enough so your customers could get in it? Well, standard phone booth. Uh, enough room in here to turn around, even. Do you need to turn around? <laughs> Can't even get the darn door shut. Well, that's all right. You can leave it open. I won't listen to it. It's not that. I don't want every Tom, Dick, and Harry eavesdropping. I have some private business. You know, I find that most people who make phone calls from drugstores have private business. Consequently, I make a point of not listening. Hello? Uh, Miss Goodwin? Uh, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. You better speak up, Mr. Gildersleeve. She'll never hear you that way. <laughs> Quiet, Peavy. Uh, excuse me a moment till I see if I can get a little privacy here. This darn door. Go on, shut. Uh, there. Uh, pardon the interruption, Miss Goodwin. Just trying to quiet Leroy. <laughs> Boys will be bo Me? Oh, just sitting here with a good book. I called because I wanted to tell you how much I enjoyed last evening. Uh, there's nothing I enjoy like good music. In fact, I thought if you weren't doing anything tonight, perhaps you might like to... Oh. Oh, that's too bad. Well, perhaps another... Oh, well, I'll... Yeah. Good night. Rats. Oh, well. <clears throat> Chan, open the door. See. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trapped. Get me out of here. PV. Don't stand there making faces. PV, do something. Can't you see I'm stuck? I can't move. No. I can't breathe. PV, get me out of here. PV. PV. Well, there go the profits. Well, why didn't you do something? You would close the door, Mr. Gildersleeve. Don't argue now. Get me out of here. Well, there's no need to get panicky, Mr. Gildersleeve. Easy, does it? Just uh, contract. Contract? Well, make a little room for the door. Breathe out. Oh, no, out. Deflate. <laughs> Easy enough. Nothing to get alarmed about. There was no air in there, Peavy. I was suffocating. Nonsense, Mr. Gildersleeve. I've seen people go into that phone booth and not come out for an hour and a half. I'm sorry I wrecked your booth. Send me a bill. Oh, that's all right. Just a matter of replacing the glass. You sure you're all right? You didn't cut yourself? No, I'm all right. I won't sue you this time, Peavy. Good night. Uh, oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah? Uh, how did the phone call come out? I didn't hear. That's why I closed the door. <laughs> Good night, Peavy. Good night. 
maybe I won't replace that glass. Where is everybody? Oh, they went out, Mr. Gillsleeve. Went out? After what I told them this morning? Well, Marjorie said she had an understanding with you. I'll have an understanding with her. And Leroy? Him, too. By George, those kids. Did he mow Mrs. Ransom's lawn this afternoon? Well, I wouldn't say he did any mowing exactly, but he got her lawnmower out. Oh. Then he gave me some razzle-dazzle that he wanted to hire me to do the mowing. Oh, he did. I dare say he figured in a modest profit for himself. Well, I don't know about that, but I told him I was too busy. I ain't got no time to mow nobody's lawns for him. Not me. Not now. Not with all the other things I got to do. No, sir. Yeah, well, I wonder if he remembered to lock up over there after he got through. I don't know, Mr. Gilsley. Wouldn't be like him if he did. Hmm. Maybe I ought to run over there and see. <laughs> Mr. Gilsley, when's she coming back? Who? Miss Ransom. Don't ask me, Bertie. But I think it'd be only neighborly to check up and make sure the house is all right. Be too bad to have burglars break into places the week before she returns. I thought you said there was no such thing as burglars, Mr. Gilsey. Run along, Bertie, run along. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> What a night. What a night. And what a moon. I'll lay ten to one Leroy left that door unlocked. Yeah, just as I thought. A fine caretaker hooker is. Maybe I ought to go in and look around. See if Leroy's been up to any mischief. Where's that switch? Oh. Oh, great. No electricity. Well, lucky there's a moon. Guess if I'm careful, I... Yeah, might take a look in the kitchen. Uh, uh, who left that there? Well, everything looks just the same here. Gosh. I remember her standing right there in front of the stove. That cute little apron she used to wear. Yellow with ruffles. <sighs> In the pantry. Uh, this is where she used to keep those wonderful cookies. In a stone crock. I remember right where it was. Nope, it's empty. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, do I remember this. She was setting the table, and I tiptoed right up behind her, stole a kiss right on the back of her little pink neck. <laughs> she spilled the water. Yeah, everything's just the same. Everything just as she left it. The wing chair, the coffee table, and there's that love seat. <laughs> Yeah, but that's not the place I remember best. It was the piano. In the evening, with lighted candles in the room, she sat right here, played like an angel. Yeah. And I sang for her. Speak to me of love and say what I'm longing to hear. Turn of love, repeat them again, I implore you, speak to me of... Leela? Throckmorton. Oh, I've missed you, Leela. Have you truly, Throckmorton? Every minute. Come back, Leela, come back. How could I resist, darling, when you ask me so nicely? But if I do come back, you'll have to promise one thing. Oh, I promise. Silly, I haven't asked you yet. All right, ask me. 
You'll have to promise to be nice to me. <laughs> and not to be nice to any other girl. Leela, from the day you left Summerfield, I've never even looked at another girl. Not one? Not one. Cross your heart? Cross... Let's forget the past, Leela. <laughs> Let's forget about everything that's happened. Oh, yes, let's. Fate has tried to part us, Leela. But love is stronger than fate. And you're stronger than anybody. <laughs> you are. You're so strong and so handsome. Oh, but you have gray hairs, Throckmorton. Well, just over the temples. Oh, I gave them to you. Oh, darling, when I come back, I'm just going to spend all my time taking care of you and trying to make you happy. Truly, I am. And I'm going to try to help you to forget, Leela. Oh, there's so much to forget. Oh, you poor kid. But perhaps, if you're very nice to me. <laughs> nice, I'll be nice to you, and starting right now. <laughs> You're so impetuous. Oh. <laughs> oh, sing for me, darling. Uh, speak to me of love and say what I'm longing to hear. Tender words of love, repeat them. Hooker! <laughs> talking to yourself, Gildy? Well, I wasn't talking to you. How long have you been here? Long enough. <laughs> well, get out of here, Hooker, and keep away from my girl. diary. Tonight, everything suddenly became clear to me. Now I know definitely where I stand. I'm certain that there, there can never be but one. Hello? Oh, Miss Goodwin. No, it's not too late for me. I'll be right over. Goodbye, Miss Goodwin. <laughs> now I'm all mixed up again. <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Music heard on this program was out of the rest of the This is Ken Carpenter, speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, inviting you to listen again next Sunday for the further adventures of the Great Yoder Sleeve. This year, thousands of women all over the country are discovering what a special help with wartime meals is the product called Kraft Dinner. A box of Kraft Dinner gives them a lot of delicious macaroni and cheese for four people at only a few cents a serving. They get two boxes of Kraft Dinner for only one single ration point. And with Kraft Dinner, they cook that delicious main dish in just seven minutes. In every Kraft Dinner box, there's a special macaroni that cooks fluffy tender in boiling water and an envelope of Kraft Grated. With this handy Kraft Grated, you whisk cheese goodness through and through the fluffy macaroni in a jiffy. A very smart trick is to shape the hot Kraft Dinner in a ring mold for a minute or two, unmold on a platter and serve with cream vegetables or fish or a little meat. But just as is, Kraft Dinner gives you a mighty fine main dish. Try this seven-minute macaroni and cheese soon. At your food store, be on the alert for point-saving Kraft Dinner.